Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be going over all of the new gameplay and information that was revealed to us today about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Of course, we live streamed this new stuff earlier, but more information and news has come out about the certain things that were announced today. So, if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Leave a comment with your thoughts on everything that was announced today. I would love to hear what you guys have got to talk about. Subscribe if you're brand new ring the notification bell with all of that out of the way let's get into the video and i really hope that you enjoy so starting things off we're just going to be taking a look at all of the new gameplay that was revealed today and then we're going to talk about all of the information as well so if you don't know what really happened today it wasn't a new trailer or anything like that basically a bunch of different journalists got to see a preview of the generation 4 remakes i think it was about 30 minutes long and within that preview they also were told about certain aspects of the game like the experience share PC boxes being able to be used anywhere, uh, contests, underground, everything like that. And then they basically just summarized everything in a video and then they uploaded a few of those different videos to YouTube. So uh, yeah, it's not a new trailer, but there is a ton of new information to go over today. But this kind of also gives you the idea that we are going to get a new trailer soon, which will probably cover all of this stuff and more. I still think it's going to be next week. That's what I said uh, for the last few weeks, but we'll still have to wait and see. So this is uh, from Game Explain. It will be linked in the description down below and I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through all the gameplay because like I said I went over this earlier if you want to go check out the big breakdown that we went over earlier it is on the channel we live streamed it um, but as you can see from this screen here we have the experience here uh, we have Starly, Shinx and Turtwig all getting experience there uh, of course the Pokemon that is in battle gets the most experience and then the rest of the Pokemon it just depends on levels so Shinx only being level 12 got 50 XP where Turtwig is level 14, it got 43 XP. Um, now, unfortunately, it has also been confirmed that you cannot turn the XP share off. Uh, in this video here, the guy says you can toggle it on or off, but I think he got it wrong because pretty much every other news source has stated that you cannot turn the XP share off. So that is very, very unfortunate because it just makes the game a little bit easier. I know people don't like grinding, myself included, um, but I think with a game like Diamond and Pearl, like they're difficult games, like you're going to have an over level team by the time you get to Cynthia. What made the game so difficult was because there was no, well, there was an XP share, but it was just one Pokemon at a time. Like the fact that all your Pokemon just get that much XP without even having to do anything with them would just make your whole team busted. And then you'd just be a really high level for Cynthia at the end of the game, which I don't really want. I want Cynthia to be as difficult as, it, as she was in the OG games. I mean, fairy types are now a thing, so she's already going to be easier. I mean, she gives you a freaking Togekiss, basically. Um, so that makes it easier. But yeah, I mean, XP share uh, is also um, uh, in, in the game. So I'm just going to let this gameplay kind of run. So obviously, there's just a battle with a Team Galactic person there. The people are just talking in the background, but obviously I've muted it. Here we have the contest. So the contests are now a rhythm game as well. Um, and also, something very interesting about contests is that they've made them only around two minutes long now. Um, which I don't really like the idea of. They were about 10 minutes before, and I think that was a perfect amount of time for a Pokemon contest. But now they've really dwindled them down to two minutes long, which is insane because there's like three different categories in each contest. So does that mean that like each category is only like 40 seconds long? Probably. Um, so yeah, I don't know why they've made it such a short, uh, a shorter thing. But yeah, a little bit annoyed at that, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, the contest about two minutes long now, which isn't great but we have to we kind of have to deal with it so this is just gameplay of the contest and stuff then we have following pokemon here with the chimchar um i think they're just kind of reminiscing about like pokemon diamond and pearl in this part of the video um like i say if you want to watch it, it we did cover it on the channel earlier uh this is the first town um which again we, we just get more gameplay of you just running through it uh, with the museum and everything like that, which is uh, which is cool. Nothing new there, really. I mean, well, it's new gameplay, but uh, next up, we have the hideaways. So, uh, obviously, there are overworld encounters in the hideaways, and the hideaways that you find depend on the kind of statues that you put in your secret base, which we already knew about. You also mine these statues um, in the underground as well. So, um, the hideaways are really cool because I still feel like it's going to be a new shiny hunting mechanic, and we'll get onto that in a second. Um, but yeah, you can obviously encounter wild Pokemon here that you can't find anywhere else in Sinnoh. And I think this is really going to just help with the decks. So a Pokemon that you couldn't really find before in like different locations and you have to trade for and stuff for Pokemon from different regions like Gen 1, 2, and 3 will probably just pop up in the hideaway and then you can just find them by 
getting the right statues in and stuff like that. So yeah, really excited about the hideaways, looking forward to them. The only thing that I've noticed about this though is the Staravia's level 26 and Murkrow's level 16. So I don't know if the, the levels actually scale or not, or they just are really, really low leveled because I don't want to be going into the hideaways with like a level 60 team and then still only finding level 16 Murkrows. Like you kind of want Pokemon to scale up as well, I guess, um, but we'll have to wait and see for that. But uh, at this point, it doesn't look like they scale because you're 10 levels higher than them um, at this part of the game. Then we have a Bidoof there, just some more gameplay, yada, 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 Chimchar. Uh, the health bars, by the way, my lord, look how quick they go down. Use Scratch, look at that, bang, bloody hell, you can make yourself a, a tea or a coffee or something in the amount of times it, it, it took to bloody, it's a Scratch on Blissey, it took forever. Um, but yeah, this time the, the health bar has actually changed and it shoots down, which is really, really good. Big fan of that. Uh, this is the statue thing. Um, so this, I think, indicates kind of what typing the statue is. Because um, we have Unknown there, which is Psychic, Electivire, which is Electric, Glade, Psychic, Fighting, and then a Probo Pass, which is Steel and Rock. Um, also, this thing down here is also a type kind of statue. Um, I don't know if she actually goes up to it in this bit or not. Yeah, she does here. So here we see it says, slightly raises the appearance of an Electric type Pokemon. So I think if you just plod those like all around your secret base, you're going to find Electric type Pokemon in the hideaways. Um, so I think that's kind of, they're the kind of things that you mine as well. Uh, now, I don't know if it's been confirmed or not because this person got a few things wrong in this video Like I say, they said that the experience sheet you could toggle on or off, but they got that wrong They did say that um, you could not decorate in the secret base The only thing you could really place are statues And to be fair, I'm kind of inclined to believe them as well because we haven't seen any gameplay on any other decorations Like no dolls or mats or anything like that. It just seems to be statues um, which does suck because now that we have online in the underground and you can go and into anyone else's underground or secret base The only thing that you can see there is statues, which is a little bit anticlimactic Also, and this is the worst thing possible, which I'm really really upset about something that Taken out of the game is that there's no longer capture the flag in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl If you are not fortunate enough to play capture the flag in the original Diamond and Pearl games Basically when you had your secret base you had a flag and if you were doing local communication uh, I'll just take my, me and my brother, for example, because we did it all the time. Basically, if we went um, local communication and we went into each other, like underground or whatever, uh, the same underground, and I had my secret base, I would have a flag in there and he would have to come and try and grab it and then take it back to his secret base. And I think you'd get like a point for it or something like that. Or you'd be able to see in your records how many flags you'd basically stolen. But to stop people from stealing your flags, you could put traps in and stuff that would send them other directions or I think teleport them to other places in the underground. That's all been taken out of the game, which is really unfortunate because I was, I was really looking forward to doing like online capture the flags and stuff like team capture the flags. It would have been so, so cool, but it's been taken out of the game. I'm so upset about, I think uh, it's, it's, it's injustice that is to take something like that out of the game. Especially with online now being on the underground. The fact that they've taken out decorations and secret bases and captured the flag most importantly. I'm really, really upset about it. Because I was really, really looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. But yeah, there's some more stuff about the... Um, the, the, the contest and stuff and the, the fact that it's a rhythm game um, Yeah, and this is just the gym thing. I, I don't I, I think it's just all gameplay that, Again, I'll link this in the description down below or you can go watch the video earlier something about poffins as well uh, Poffins is not online anymore. It is just single player So they've actually scrapped online or local communication for poffins You could used to be able to create poffins with other people and they could add ingredients and make better items now it is just solely single player. You cannot do online poffins, which I'm not really too bothered about, but at the same time, it's just something else that they have cut. So even though they have like added loads and loads of new stuff to the game, they've also cut a few things as well. And one of those being capture the flag, which I'm so angry about, but I'm gonna be okay, we'll be all right. Uh, this is more hideaway gameplay, just with the Murkrow. I think they're kind of just relaying the gameplay that we've already seen, to be fair, as they just talk about it in the background. But I think I've pretty much gone over all of the main things that they talk about in this video, um, which which it means we'll, we'll move on. So, something else that they didn't talk about in this video, but they talked about in a different video, are shiny statues. So, this was a tweet from Poke Experto who said, Some statues in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl secret layers are shiny Pokemon with different effects. Now, they didn't go into detail about what those effects do, but I think it's something to do with a new shiny hunting mechanic. I think the more shiny Pokemon you have maybe increases the chance of a shiny Pokemon popping up in the hideaway. Because there's overworld encounters in the hideaway as well, it would be a really, really good idea to have overworld shiny encounters. 
And I'm really, really hoping that that is the case, or this is some sort of shiny hunting method. Because, um, as you can see, the Steelix is obviously a different coloured Steelix. Um, I, I guess the others aren't as well, so I don't really know... It says Liz are shiny Pokemon, so it's, it's, it's still confusing. It's early days. We don't really know too much about it. Um, but yeah, these interesting statues hopefully have something to do with shiny Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. But again, they didn't talk about it in the Game Explain video. I think they spoke about it in like the Game Informer video or something like that. Um, but yeah, shiny Pokemon statues are in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I'm guessing they're going to be quite rare to find, but it is what it is. Finishing things off, this was an article written by uh, Felipe, and basically it just kind of summarizes all of the stuff that was shown in the trailer today, um, and all the information that we kind of um, got today. Again, uh, there's loads, loads more stuff to go over, like the, there's about 10 different companies that got previews of the game um, that kind of spoke about it, and we'll probably go over a couple of those um, in the future if there's any new information. But as of right now, this is all of the new information for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, as well as the stuff that already went over. So, Capture the Flag being uh, taken out, two minute contest, all that. We also have this. So, experience share is present in games from the beginning. Um, so, you get at the very start of the game, sharing the experience gained in battles with all the Pokemon of the team, as in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, it cannot be disabled. So, you cannot turn off experience share, most likely. We're like 99% sure, because there's this one guy in that video saying, no, you can toggle it on or off. And then pretty much every single other person saying, no, you can't toggle it on or off. It is on the whole time. So it's 99.9% .9 sure that it is online uh, on the whole time. Then it says the game features quality of life improvements implemented in the most recent games in the main franchise, such as the indication of effectiveness of attacks for Pokemon the player has faced before. So what that means is that basically if you go up against a Roselia and you've already battled a Roselia before and you're in there with a Staravia and you have your moves up and it says wing attack, it will basically say like super effective or not very effective or effective depending on like what the move is and what you're going up against. So yeah, that's just basically what we had in Sword and Shield. Just a nice quality of life update. Um, yeah, very welcomed. Next up it says, it was also confirmed that the player will be able to access the box system where their Pokemon are stored at any time during the game for exchange between the teammates. So I'm very happy that they've decided to do this um, because it was just a ball ache really having to go back and forth to just get certain Pokemon out. If we had HMs in the game um, like they used to be, but we also had this feature, I don't think I would have been as bothered because I would have had a Bidoof in the box with like Cut, Surf, Rock Smash, whatever, which I just would have quickly put in my team and taken out. It's not the only thing that was annoying about HMs was the fact that you had to run all the way back to the Pokemon Center and then run all the way back to this tree that you got to cut now. Um, but yeah, I think if you just was able to access your box anyway, I don't think HMs would have been that much of a problem. But that's just my two cents on that situation. Next up, autosave is present and enabled by default in games, with the player's option to disable it to use manual save at any time via the options menu. I don't know why they've given us a choice to be able to toggle autosave on or off, but they have uh, and not experience share, but it is what it is um but yeah auto save is in the game just like it was in sword and shield now i think there were problems with auto save in sword and shield and i turned it off at the very start because i didn't want it to break my game which apparently some people had experienced so i will be turning auto save off just to make sure but yeah auto save is in pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl this is a very interesting statement here. It's not very well written, but it, it says National Pokedex doesn't feature in the games, but Sinnoh's original encyclopedia has been expanded to cover 450 Pokemon from the first four generations. And this obviously asks a lot of questions. So the Diamond and Pearl National Dex or the Platinum National Dex, 493 Pokemon, but there's only 450 in this. So they've scrapped 43 Pokemon. So does that mean They've scrapped like legendaries and mythicals and stuff like that. Or have they just picked up random Pokemon and just scrapped them like Shroomish and Brilliant? Like, have they just been like, nah, you're not in the game? I think it's personally going to be um, mythicals and legendaries. But then at the same time, when Pokemon Home becomes available, are you not going to be able to trade those Pokemon into Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, like a ho -Oh, for example? Um, I I'm not really too sure. However, on the other side of things, though, it could be like in Sword and Shield, where certain Pokemon don't actually have a Pokedex entry, and so um, you can still put them in the game, they just don't, like I say, have a Pokedex entry. So you could still transfer ho -Oh into the game, it just, like I say, it you won't be able to get the Pokedex stuff on it. Uh, on the other side of things, I think the Platinum Dex was like 210, so it could be saying that it's been expanded up to 450 from that. But I don't think that's the case. I, I, I think they've just dropped 43 Pokemon. And I think it's just going to be Mythicals and Legendaries. Which does suck. 
but maybe they are still in the game, they just don't have a Pokedex entry. But yeah, it's a very vague kind of statement, and it's caused a lot of confusion. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. I hope the Pokemon kind of come out and talk about that. Uh, next up, it says TMs will follow the usage pattern implemented in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, with only one usage per disc. However, it will be easy to get more TMs of the same move. So I think this is another line that wasn't written very well because TMs have always been, uh, well, not always been, but in the later games, uh, TMs you, uh, you've you been able to use multiple times. It's TRs that are single use. So TRs in Sword and Shield, once you use, they broke, um, but they were really easy to obtain through like raids and stuff like that. So I think that's what they're referring to. Um, with, with TRs and, and maybe you get them, I don't know, in like the hideaways or something because items are in the hideaways. There's a bit of gameplay which shows uh, the character running up to an item and there's a cypher there as well. So maybe you just get TRs and hideaways, who knows? But yeah, I think they're talking about TRs there. And then it says MOs, which are former HMs. So HMs are now known as MOs, are enabled in Poketch after the player is victorious against each of the gym leaders. So basically way back when, when you beat a certain gym leader, you were able to use a HM outside of battle. Um, but now you just get the Poketch thing outside of battle. So yeah, like I say, there was a lot of gameplay to go over, a lot of stuff to break down, a lot of new information to talk about for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. There's even more stuff to go over, I'm sure, over the next few days that will come out. I think there's talk about like the Safari Zone gameplay and stuff, which we'll cover tomorrow. Uh, the Great Marsh, apparently that's back in the game. So that's not going to be like a Pokemon home kind of um, den or open area. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you're brand new. That's everything from me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.